Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar providing an overview of Atlas TI-8 for Windows. My name is Ivana Radovojevic, and I'm the Project Coordinator and Client Relations Manager with Atlas TI in our Europe office. So what we're going to see today is an introduction and a global overview of the newest generation of the software. And we're going to see how we can start a project with Atlas TI and carry out the analysis. And throughout the presentation, I encourage each of you to think about your own projects and your own data. And so what kind of data are you planning to analyze? And so to think how Atlas TI may be able to fit into your own research needs. I've also put up our contact information here, and I invite everyone to take a note of it. So in case you ever have any questions in the future at any point, you can always contact us and we'll be more than happy to help. Now, in addition to this, after seeing today's webinar, if you do decide to purchase Atlas TI, you can all count on a 10% discount coupon. So just send me an email and let me know, and I'll be more than happy to send you along that discount coupon code to you. So I'd like to start off by saying, what is Atlas TI? Well, this is a computer-assisted qualitative data analysis software. In other words, this is a software that will help us qualitatively analyze any type of unstructured or semi-structured data. We can use Atlas TI to identify the themes and patterns and meanings across all of our data. And of course, we can analyze a great variety of kinds of data using Atlas TI. So we can have textual data in the form of interview transcriptions or survey responses, or even articles if we're also using Atlas TI for our literature review. And apart from this, we can also analyze images, audios, videos, geodata in the form of Google Earth Maps, and social media data, such as tweets from Twitter. So all of these different kinds of data can be imported into the same project so that you can identify the overarching trends and emerging themes. And where does Atlas TI come from? Well, the first version was developed in the Technical University of Berlin in 1989. And indeed, our headquarters today is in Berlin, but we also now count on offices and users all around the world. So Atlas TI has been on the commercial market for well over 20 years now, and today we count on Atlas TI for Windows and Atlas TI for Mac. If you have a tablet and you also like to work from there, you can find a free Atlas TI app on our website. And so you can download this app and then have Atlas TI on your Android or iPad tablet and continue analyzing your data while you're on the go. Now, <clears throat> just a quick note on the different kinds of licenses that you'll find with Atlas TI. So whenever you purchase Atlas TI, it's always going to be a one-time purchase and you'll have the full software. There's no hidden functionalities or extra costs that come down later. It'll be a one-time purchase and you'll have everything. So we offer perpetual or lifetime licenses for individual and group users. Now, if you're a student, you can get Atlas TI at a significantly reduced cost, and you can get this for a period of six months or two years. If you're interested in getting five or more licenses at a time, you'll also see that you have the option to lease the licenses or to just pay for each year that you want to use Atlas TI. Now, for any of these types of licenses, if you do decide to purchase Atlas TI, remember that you can count on that 10% discount coupon. Just send me an email and I'll pass it right along to you. Now, in particular, what I'd like to emphasize here is the free trial version of Atlas TI. So we offer a perpetual trial version from our website. So this means that there's no time limit on the trial version. The only limitation is in the size of the project that you can create but it offers an excellent way to get to know the software, perhaps already try it out with your own data and see how it suits your needs. So you can of course find all, uh, all of this and more information on our website. And apart from this, you can also find a great variety of learning resources that we offer. For example, if you and your group of colleagues, researchers, or students want to learn more about Atlas TI, you can request a free on-demand group demo webinar. So you can request a personalized presentation that our team would prepare for you, and then we'll give this in a virtual format to you and your group. And so you can request this on our website, and we'll be more than happy to prepare a one-hour presentation based on your needs and interests. If you want to learn Atlas TI in even more depth, you could always attend one of our premium trainings. So we offer these in online and face-to-face -face formats, 
And we go into much more depth with Atlas TI, and we also look at concepts of qualitative methodology and how our methodology can inform our use of the software. Upon completing any of our premium trainings, you'll also receive an official Atlas TI certificate. And then we have all the trainings, but on the other hand, we also have a great variety of resources that you can always explore to continue learning more about the software. So we have the full manual, quick tours, a research blog, the user forum, a library of different resources. And in particular, what I'd like to point out here are our video tutorials. So we have a video tutorial that covers each specific aspect of the software, and it offers a great way to revise any part of the software if you ever have any questions or doubts. Now, all that being said, you can also always, of course, count on our free perpetual support. Just give us a call or send us an email, and we'll be more than happy to help you. Now, I'd like to show this image, because this is probably a familiar picture for any of us who have ever analyzed any data manually before. And well, what do we do? We simply go through reading the text, and we underline the bits of information that are important or that stand out to us, that can maybe help us answer our research question. We write our notes in the margin area, Perhaps we already start drawing connections across all our different ideas. And of course, this is what the research process consists of. And this is a wonderful process in and of itself. But as we can see here, it's quite easy for this to become quite a big mess. And that's exactly where Atlas TI comes in. Atlas TI is a tool that will accompany us throughout the entire research process. So from the very beginning of setting up our project and organizing our data, to actually analyzing all of the data in depth, and then, of course, to finally generating our rigorous results. So Atlas TI will accompany us throughout the entire journey, and it'll help us stay organized and keep track of things. And we won't ever have to worry of, oh, which page was it that I had that one note written on, or where was it that I had that piece of information? Because with Atlas TI, we can recuperate all of this information with just the click of a button. So what we'll see today is that Atlas TI is a powerful software that's easy to use and easy to learn. So you spend less time learning how to use the software and more time actually analyzing your data. With Atlas TI, you'll always stay close to the data and the full context so that you can reveal the meanings and relationships across your entire project. Or in other words, Atlas TI is the ideal tool for those who want to see the big picture, but at the same time appreciate the finer details of their data. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look now at Atlas TI-8 for Windows. <clears throat> so here we are in the main screen, the main welcome screen, when we first open Atlas TI. And we see here we have the option to create a brand new project, import an already existing project, import a mobile project. If you've been working on your tablet and you want to move it to the computer, you can do that here. And we can import a legacy project. So if you've been working with an older version of Atlas TI, you can rest assured that you can import all of your projects into the newest version and continue working on them. Down below and along the left-hand side, Atlas TI gives a list of all of the projects that have been previously opened on this computer. So for the purpose of today, I'm going to use a project that we already have analyzed. And in this project, we're investigating the relationship between children and happiness. So how does having children affect parents' happiness? And this is a sample project, meaning that you can find this project on our website and download it. So you can also open it on your own computer and explore it and see how it looks. And if you want to have a safe space where you can learn to use the software, you'll find this children and happiness project on our website. And so now let's take a quick look at the overall interface of Atlas TI here. Well, we have the name of the project right in the center. Along the top, we have all of the main functions, and this is where we'll always find all the different options to work on our project. Moreover, all of these functions are organized into a series of tabs, so it'll be easier for us to find whatever we're looking for. And finally, if you hover your mouse over any of the buttons, there's always going to be help text that appears. So also, you'll always be able to easily see what exactly each button does. On the left-hand side here, we have the Project Explorer panel. And from this panel, we can directly see and access every part of our project. 
So we have first here our documents. We, have, we can see we have 43 documents in this project. If we open up the list by clicking on the arrow, we can see all of the documents here. Now, a document simply refers to any source of information that we're going to be analyzing. So documents can be text documents, such as articles. They can be transcriptions or survey responses, as we have here. But documents can also be video files, audio files, Google Earth Maps, tweets. We also have uh, images. So all of these different sources of information are imported into Atlas TI as documents. As we can see here, whenever we open a document, Atlas TI will load it into the main working space, and it'll put them all in different tabs, so you can easily navigate through them. And if we want, we can also simply I'll go ahead and close the rest of the tabs to keep the working space nice and clear here. So that's about the different documents we can have in Atlas TI. To add any documents to your project, just go to the Home tab, and you have Add Documents here. Now that we have this document loaded, let's take a look at how we can actually analyze this data. So when we conduct our analysis in Atlas TI, actually I'll just take a look if we have a, a document that's less, that we have a bit of a cleaner document. I'll just go ahead and close that one as well. Here we go. Here's an article that we don't have yet quite analyzed. So I've imported these different articles to the project here because aside from analyzing our primary data, we also want to analyze uh, the articles and conduct our literature review using Atlas TI. And so we have the documents here. And how do we analyze this information? Well, similarly as to when we work with pen and paper, we're simply going to go reading the text, and then whenever you find anything that's interesting or relevant for your research question, and you want to capture this bit of information, you want to segment this piece of the data, we're going to create a quotation. All you have to do is highlight that segment of the text that you want to save. Now you can highlight as much or as little as you would like. And now to save this quotation, you just right click, and then we have some different options here. We can create a free quotation. By clicking, we see in the margin area on the right hand panel, we have this blue vertical bar that's appeared. This bar is always going to indicate the size and location of any quotations in our document. And this is a free quotation because we don't have anything else associated to it. We're just segmenting the data. But if we want to already go ahead and capture some of our analysis on this quotation, we can go ahead and associate some codes. Now a code is simply a word or a short phrase that's capturing something that we're seeing in the data. We can use codes to be descriptive, to describe what's going on in this piece of data. Or we can use codes to synthesize some sort of analytical point or to, uh, to synthesize that this has to do with some sort of theory. We can create as many codes as we want and whatever types of codes that we would like in order to capture our analysis. And so perhaps another helpful way to think about codes is that they're simply tags that we're going to go attaching to our different quotations. So going back to our example here, let's select another quotation, just highlight the text, right click, and now I'm gonna click Open Coding. With Open Coding, you can enter any new code names that you want. So looking at this uh, quotation that we have here, I can see that it's talking about a previous experiment that was conducted. So this is important for the literature review to know how other people have analyzed this particular topic here. And it also has to do with the socioeconomic environment. And so, and as well, I see genetic inheritance. So I'm just creating these codes to describe this quotation. And as you can see, you can add as many codes as, as you would like at a time. So now we'll go ahead and click Create. And we see that once again, that quotation has been saved. We see that blue, uh, that blue vertical bar. And we also see now the codes associated to it. Now another way that we can conduct our analysis in Atlas TI is by using in vivo coding. 
What in vivo coding does is it'll convert the selected text in the quotation and it'll convert it into a code. So this is really useful if you want to capture the exact words of the author or your participants. So imagine your participants have expressed something and you love the way that they express that and you want to capture those exact words. To use in vivo coding, all you have to do is select that segment of the text that you want to capture, right click, and in vivo coding. And then Atlas TI creates a code from that text. Now, as we continue reading and creating our quotations and analyzing the information, odds are is that you're going to have some codes repeating. So let's imagine as we move on here, and I see that, in, so let's imagine that in this quotation, once again, it's talking about the influence of genetic inheritance. Now, I already have that code created, so I don't want to make it again and have duplicates. Well, you can, of course, use any of your already existing codes as well. All you need to do is go to the Project Explorer panel and open up your list of codes. So here we can see all of the codes that are in this project. And there we have our code on genetic inheritance. So since we created it here, Atlas TI saves it in the list of codes. To associate this code to the quotation, all we have to do is select that text and then click drag and drop the code on top of the quotation. So you can also conduct analysis in Atlas TI. You can carry out your coding just by dragging and dropping your codes on top of the different quotations. So those are some of the different ways in which we can analyze text documents in Atlas TI. Now, let's imagine that I've just imported this article, and honestly, I haven't read it in depth yet. So I don't know uh, everything that this article is about. But before reading it, I'd like to get a quick global overview of what this article is about. I want to conduct a quick content analysis. Whenever you have a document open, you'll see up in the ribbon panel that you have two tools they can use to analyze the frequency of words in this document. You can create a word list or a word cloud. So if you click on word cloud, Atlas TI will generate this cloud showing the most frequently occurring words in this document, in this text document we had here. And so now we can quickly and easily see the most frequently occurring words from this document here. If you want to remove any of these from the count, you can simply right click and add to stop word list. And then Atlas TI will adjust the count. So we can easily edit the cloud to show the words that are most relevant for our investigation here. And along the top in the panel again, we have some more options for editing the cloud. If we want to change the layout or the threshold to only show words that are appearing more than a certain number of times. And then of course, we can also save this cloud as a separate image file. And so then this would be external to Atlas TI. And then we can of course include this in our final report or presentation. <clears throat> so taking a look at this uh, word cloud here, I can see that the author's talking a lot about children, the different effects, married, life. And so that's good. This seems very relevant for my topic of study. And I can see that the word satisfaction appears very many times. I wonder in what way is the author talking about satisfaction? And I want to learn more about uh, the satisfaction of parents or the satisfaction of children. Well, let's take a look back in the article. When you want to identify a specific word or phrase, and then to quickly and easily find where this occurs in any text document, you can use autocoding. What autocoding will do is it'll search for any word that you want, and anytime it finds it, it'll automatically create a quotation and associate a code for you. So let's take a look. I'm gonna open the autocoding tool, and so I want it to search for the word satisfaction. Every time it finds this word, I want it to select the full sentence in which this word appears. And then I want to associate a code. So you can pick a code from your list. So here I already have life satisfaction. Or you can create a new code, which in fact, I will create a new code because I don't know if it's talking about life satisfaction or what kind of satisfaction. 
And so, and then I'm also going to make sure that I'm confirming each of the matches so that you can decide yourself whether or not you want to code what autocoding will find. And let's begin. So Atlas TI has already found the word and has highlighted the sentence for us here. And now we can decide whether we want to code this or skip it. Since this is the abstract, I'm going to go ahead and skip it. I'm not so interested in coding that. Here we have the keyword selected, so that doesn't need to be coded. And here we have now in the introduction, well, yes, this quotation is something interesting, so I am going to go ahead and code it. So in this way, you can quickly and easily filter through your entire body of text and identify these relevant segments of information. And now this TI will just continue taking you through the document with each find so that you can decide what you want to do with it. If I unselect this option to confirm the matches and I click code it, Atlas TI will go ahead and automatically code every time it finds this word. So that's also a really useful feature and now we can go through and double check everything that Atlas TI found. If we want to adjust the size of any quotations or add any other codes to it, well we can certainly do so. Now if we take a look, perhaps it also found some of this word in the references section since we let it go ahead and do the autocoding itself. And so yes, I see here that there's a reference coded, and honestly, I'm not interested in that. You can always easily delete any, you can always unlink any code or delete any quotation just by right-clicking on it. So those are some of the different ways that we can analyze text documents with Atlas TI. And taking advantage of the word cloud and word list and autocoding is really great to kickstart your analysis in the beginning parts of your investigation. Now let's take a look at how we can analyze a video or audio document. So I have imported here a video, and as we can see, we can directly watch and listen to the video in Atlas TI. <clears throat> we have all the options here to adjust the volume, we can adjust the playback rate if we want to speed it up or slow it down. And if you're, if you're working with audio files, you're going to have the exact same interface and the exact same practice. The only difference is you won't have this image here in the middle. And so how do we analyze a video or audio? Well, we're going to do the exact same practice of saving quotations and associating codes. And indeed, we see that same margin panel on the right-hand side here. And so how do we create a video or audio quotation? Well, you just have to go to the timeline on the right-hand side and then click, drag, and drop to select your video quotation. You can save this quotation just by clicking on the quotation button here. Now Atlas TI, we have it over here on the side. Of course, we can have overlapping quotations so that we can go into as much detail as we'd like, but so we just see that this one's overlapping over here. And we can always revise any of these quotations just by clicking on the play button. And Atlas TI will play exactly that segment of the text. Now, if we want to associate our codes to this quotation, well, as you may have imagined, you can do the exact same things that we saw before. You can just right click and you have the options here again, or you can just drag and drop your codes from the left hand side. Now, so far, I've been showing how we can work with the quotations just by right-clicking on them. But as you may have already noticed, you have these same options in the ribbon panel above. So you can either do it by right-clicking or using the buttons up here, whatever way you prefer. Now, taking a look at this video, now imagine, let's imagine I also want to analyze the visual aspects of this video. So how the parents are sitting with their children, and I also want to capture this in my analysis. If you're working with videos and you also want to analyze the visual features, you have the possibility up here to capture a snapshot. By clicking on this button, Atlas TI will, take a, will essentially take a screenshot of what you have on the screen here, and it's just created a new image document for us. And yes, we see it here in our list of documents. I double click on it, we can now open it, and now we have an image file. And so to analyze images, once again, we're going to select our quotations and associate codes. And to segment an area of the image, 
you simply have to click, drag, and drop, and you'll see this rectangle appear. And you can easily move this around or resize it so you can capture the segment that you want. And then, just as always, we can right click, use the buttons above, or simply drag and drop our codes. And so, this is how we can also analyze images. And remember, we can go into as much detail or depth as we would like, and we'll always see all of our work in the right hand margin panel. Now, as I'm analyzing this image from the video and thinking about the interview of the parents, well, I have a lot of ideas uh, in my head, and I'd like to write these down somewhere. So coding is an essential part to analyzing the data, but at some point, we're also going to want to write down our ideas and descriptions, analyses. Whenever you want to write down anything in Atlas TI, you can use a memo. A memo is simply a notebook. It's a blank space in which we can write down anything that we would like. So I'm going to create a new memo. I'll just repeat that real quick under the Home tab and New Entities. And I'll create a new memo here. And so in this memo, I'm going to be writing about the family that was interviewed. So the family being interviewed in this study. And I'll create the memo. And now Atlas TI opens up this blank space for us. And so from here, we can write our reflections and analyses, descriptions, any ideas or doubts or questions. So memo writing is a really important part of qualitative analysis because that's where we really start to analyze the data and go into depth because it's really us, the researchers, that are analyzing this information. And so memos are a great way to write all of this down. And so now I can write about this family and my ideas and then as we see, we can edit the memo just as with any sort of text editing software that we normally use. And I'll go ahead and save it. But now going back to the image that we're analyzing, it was this quotation here, this piece of data that inspired this memo. And it's exactly, I'm talking about this quotation in the memo. And I want to make sure that I remember that. Well, just as we link codes to our quotations, we can also link memos to our quotations. And this is a really great feature for any qualitative analysis because that way we can go about elaborating our analyses and at the same time associating the pieces of data and empirical evidences that are supporting our analysis. So to associate any memo to a quotation, we're going to do it in the exact same way as we did with the codes. We're just going to look at the list of memos on the left-hand side. Here we have the memo we just made now and then drag and drop it onto the quotation. So with any of the kinds of quotations we make in Atlas TI, we can always associate codes and memos. And this is really the foundation of any qualitative analysis. And this is really the, the most central part of analyzing our data in Atlas TI. We're going to save our quotations and associate codes and memos. Now let's take a look Let's take a step back now. So we've done some analysis here, and I'd like to take a look at the different at our list of codes here. So you're going to go analyzing the data and creating your codes, and at some point you're probably going to want to step back and reorganize your code list a little bit. So to do this kind of work, we're going to open the Codes Manager. So under the Home tab, you'll find the managers of each of the main entities of the project. And so let's take a look here to work with the codes. I just now opened the code manager and Atlas TI has opened it as a separate window, but it's also worth keeping in mind that with any of the windows here, you can always, you have the option to always dock it in the main window. So it's just like a tab, like we've been seeing up until now, or you can float it. And this goes for any of the windows in Atlas TI. So you can always uh, work in whatever way you prefer. Now taking a look at the code manager. Well, we have here our full list of codes. And alongside each code, we have some more information. We can see the groundedness and density of each code. Groundedness refers to how many quotations we have associated to this code. And density refers to how many links this code has with any other codes in the project. So we'll see density in a bit more detail when we take a look at the networks. We can also see which groups this code belongs to. So we can create groups for any of our codes, 
And on the left-hand side, we see all the code groups in this project. And groups are a great way to organize our data. And if we continue to just scrolling along to the right, we'll also see who worked on each code and when. So Atlas TI is always going to save your username. And thanks to this, it's also a great tool for teamwork because then you can have multiple people working in the same project, but you'll always be able to see who's done what and when. Finally, down below, we have the comment space. Now, every single object in Atlas TI has its own comment space. And you can think of this as a little sticky note that's always going to go attached to this object. And you can use the comment space to then describe that object to give more contextual information. So when it comes to codes, we recommend using the comment space to write out the operational definition of that code. So you could just click on the code and then click down below and you can write out the definition of that code to say what it refers to, how and when uh, it should be associated or coded to a quotation. So writing out the definitions of each code is important for the transparency of your research so that it's clear how you conceptually and operationally understand all your different concepts. And while the common space is a great place to include that information. Now, as we already said, on the left-hand side, we can see the code groups. And this is a great way to organize your codes. To create a group, you simply select the codes you want to group together and then drag and drop them onto the left-hand side. And now we can give a name to this code group. So for example, uh, these codes, I can say these are simply descriptive codes. And so now we have the group there. So we can see all the codes of the different groups here. And if you want to add any code to an already existing group, just drag and drop it on top and you'll see it added. Another way that we can organize the codes, as you may have already noticed that we have here, you can use prefixes. So to add a prefix to any of your codes, you simply rename that code and then just add whatever prefix you would like. And the great advantage of using prefixes is that you can already put a structure to your codes. So for example, we have a lot of codes on the different negative effects of parenting and the different positive effects. And so we have this overarching general code, but in order to be able to see the analysis in more detail, we've created more specific codes that for each specific kind of effect. And then by putting in the prefix, well, we can see that fulfillment has to do with the positive effects. Another advantage to using prefixes to organize your codes is that then you'll always see your codes appearing together in the list. Atlas TI will always show the codes in alphabetical order. And so by putting prefixes, we'll know that all the codes that are relevant, that have something to do with each other, they'll appear next to each other in the list. And well, really, it just makes it so much easier to navigate through your list of codes. And finally, another way that we can organize our list of codes is by giving colors to the codes. You simply click on a code and then you can change the color up here. So you may want to give the same color for each group of codes, or you may want to use colors to organize them into different themes and categories. Of course, you can use these different features in whatever way makes sense for your project, but it's so you know that you have these different options available. Whatever work we do here in the Code Manager will also appear in our list of codes in the Project Explorer panel on the left-hand side. So once again, that's why we, we can take advantage of using prefixes and colors, because it'll just make us easier for, for us to find the codes that we're looking for. Now, aside from organizing and describing the different codes in the Code Manager, we can also already export our work from here. So we can create reports from any of the managers in Atlas TI. We can create reports in Excel or to text documents, and we use reports to export any information that we're interested in. So imagine if I want to now, now I'm at the part of my paper where I'm writing about the different positive effects of parenting, and I want to see all the information I have on the positive effects. So I'm just gonna select this group of codes, and I'll select my codes here, because those are the ones I'm interested in. And I'm going to click on Report. Now we see here what items we have selected that we're going to focus on. 
And now we just tell LSTI what information we want included in this report. So we can just simply check the boxes to have as much or as little information as we'd like here. And so you can really go into as much detail as you want by continuing to click on the drop down arrows, or you could just simply have the content of the quotations and nothing more, whatever you want here. But you can now bring out your memos and the content of them so you can see those memos that were associated to your quotations. And we can see any other codes that have been associated, what groups they belong to. So whatever information you're interested in, you just tell LSTI, and now we'll create the report. Now LSTI puts all of this together for you in one document. You see the name of the project, what kind of report it is. And down below, we see the first code that we had selected, who we'll worked on it. We have the comments of that code, so we can already see the code's definition right here in the report. We can see what groups this code belongs to. And we see there's two quotations associated to this code. Here's the name of the quotation, which is just the automatic short name that's given. And here's the full contents of that quotation. And we see two other codes that have been associated to it. And here's that second quotation. So in one report, we have all of the quotations that have been associated to our different codes here. And now I have all the information I need to write up my section on the positive effects of parenting. We can now save the support as a Word or PDF file. And so then when I'm writing about this section, I don't even need to go back into Atlas TI and open up all the documents again. I can just look at this report that I've exported. So that's just one example, but it's worth exploring the different reporting options you have in Atlas TI because you have the text options. You can also export to Excel. And you'll find these options throughout the entire software. Now, the great news is also with Atlas TI, if we know how to use one of the managers, we'll know how to use all of them. Because each of the managers has the exact same interface. I've just opened up here the document manager just so we can take a quick look. But you'll see as well the same interface, except in this case we have our documents. Each document also has a comment space. And in this case, we can use the comment space to write out the full reference of that document. So we always know where exactly it came from. And then, of course, we can also group our documents to organize them, rename them if we'd like. And again, if we want to create reports, we have the options here. So those are some of the ways in which we can edit and describe and organize the different parts of our project. Now let's take a look at how we can visually analyze our work. What I want to do now is create a network. I'm going to go again to the new entities function here and click on New Network. And in this network, I'd like to take a look at the different definitions of happiness that were found throughout this study. So I give the name. Atlas TI opens a blank network here for us. I'm going to go ahead and dock it in the main screen. And so now, let's see. I want to add some objects to this network. Now, you can visualize any part of your project in Networks in Atlas TI. I'd like to start off with my codes. So I have some different codes here on the definitions of happiness, and I'm going to add them to the network just by dragging and dropping them from the left-hand side. Now remember we talked about the prefixes and making these subcodes as we have here. And now I want to visually show this relationship, this hierarchy between the codes. So I'm going to link them. You just select a code, and then from the little red circle that appears in the corner, you click, drag, and drop onto the code you want to associate it to, and when you let go, you can name this relation. So Atlas TI provides a series of relation names by default that you can, of course, use. But if you want to put your own relation names or edit these arrows or the text or anything else, you can, of course, do that as well. And so now we have a simple code hierarchy here that shows the different kinds of defi uh, happiness definitions that we found. But I'd also like to see some more information about these codes. If you go to the View tab, you have here more options for what other information is going to be visualized in the network. We can see the comments of the objects. So we can see the comments of the codes and directly see the definition of each of these codes. So that's a really useful thing for the network. It makes it easy for people to understand when I'm presenting my findings. We can also show the frequencies. 
So again, we have that groundedness and density. So groundedness, how many quotations we have associated, and density, how many links this code has with other codes in the project. So I can see that this just isn't hasn't updated properly. I'll just refresh the network so we can see that density properly. And there we have it. We now see that this code has a density of three because it has three links to other codes. And so taking a look here, I can see about uh, happiness being subjective. We have eight quotations associated. Now I'd like to see these codes. I don't remember exactly uh, what they were about and I want to refresh my memory and I want to see them in the network. You can easily import the codes or any other object associated to this code by right clicking and going to import neighbors. A neighbor is simply anything else that's been associated to this object here. And as I said, I want to see the quotations. So now Atlas TI imports all of the quotations that have been associated to this code. Where we see these other links, that means that this uh, quotation has also been associated with these other codes. So Atlas TI remembers all this work, and it'll also show these relationships as you import the objects into the network. Now, it's great that we can see the name of the quotation, and of course, if we wanted to change the names, we could to make it more descriptive. But I'd like to see the full content of the quotation. So I'm just going to click on Preview up here in the View tab. And now we can see the full content of each quotation, of the text, of the images as well. We can already visualize those. And from here, we can even continue to analyze and draw connections between all these different parts of the project. We can create hyperlinks or quotation quotation links to describe how they're related as well. We can also continue to link our quotations to other codes in the network and effectively continue coding our data from the network. So if you prefer to work visually, you also have that possibility. And remember, we can view any of our objects in the network. So we can also add memos and visualize the content of that memo. And then we can also associate this memo to the different objects. So any part of your project can be visualized and then you can draw relations between them to draw the overarching picture of your analysis. Now that we've imported all these different objects, the network's a bit of a mess, and I'd like to organize it now. Well, with Atlas TI-8 for Windows, we have a series of automatic layout options that we can also take advantage of. Just click here, and you can explore the different kinds of layouts, and then find the one that'll best describe your data. And so those are some of the ways that we can work with networks. And you can, of course, create as many networks as you'd like if you want to use it for analysis or to create your own uh, theoretical framework or to just summarize your findings. You, the networks are very flexible. And then, of course, you can also export this network as an image or a PDF file, and then you can include this in your final report or your presentation. So that's a bit about the networks with Atlas TI. Now finally, I'd like to take a look at the different advanced analysis tools that we can take advantage of. So we already saw how we can conduct a content analysis by using the word cloud or the word list. Now let's take a look at some other ways that we can analyze the data. Under the Analyze tab, we'll find the different tools here. And so let's start with the code document table. What this table will do for us is it'll show us how many times our codes appear across our different documents. So we can select our individual codes, or we can work directly with our code groups. And we have the same with our documents. So let's say in this case, I want to see about, in fact, in this case, I'd like to compare my female and male participants. So we have here our participants from a survey we conducted. And instead of uh, selecting them individually, I want to see the groups of all the female participants and male participants, and so I can already compare and contrast the responses. And about the participants, I want to see what their different reasons for having children are. So I'm going to go ahead and select all the codes I have for reasons for having children. And now we have the table here. I'll just go ahead and invert the order so that we can see everything well. And so what the table is showing us 
is that this code appears once in the documents in this group, and it appears twice in the documents in this group. We can also see the totals at the end. So how can we interpret this? Well, I can see that, interestingly enough, it seems that the male participants talked more about altruism or having always known it, but we can see on the other hand that the female participants talked more about biology or ha having children for oneself in a self-centered sort of way. We also see women talked much more about unconditional love. So the code document table, in other words, gives us a nice way to get this global idea of where in our project the different codes are coming up, and we can co easily compare and contrast between our different groups. If we want to save this table, we have some different exporting options here. If we want to save it as an image file, text file, or we can also send it straight to Excel. And then from there, we could do other quantitative analyses, or we could create a graphic of this data if we want to have a pie chart or a bar chart, and we can easily do that there. And so that's how we can work with the code document table. Now let's take a look at the code co-occurrence table. So again, we're creating a table here, but now we're just looking at our codes. And we want to see if any of our codes co-occur, or in other words, if they're coexisting on the same data, on the same quotation. So let's just go ahead and work through an example to see how we can interpret this. So with this uh, table, now what I'd like to take a look at are the different positive and negative effects of parenting that we've identified. So I'm going to select my codes about these and put them in the rows and the columns. And so now we can see here that this code co-occurs four times with this code. By clicking on any of the cells, we can see down below the list of quotations where these two codes are occurring. So if we want to also revisit these quotations to get a better idea, you can just double click and then Atlas TI will open that quotation for you back in its full context. So that's one of the ways that Atlas TI always keeps you close to the data. We don't have the quotations now removed from their context. But going back to the table here, so we see these different co-occurrences, but how can we make sense of this? Well, taking a look at where we have the highest co-occurrence here, there's a co-occurrence of 13 between the positive effect of personal growth and the negative effect of having more worries and stress. Now, this is something that I wasn't expecting to find when I started, because it seems that when participants were talking about parenting and they talked about all oh, more worries and stress and responsibilities, at the same time, they were talking about the great benefit of experiencing personal growth. And so it's interesting that these two codes co-occur so frequently, and perhaps there's a reason for this. Perhaps there's some sort of underlying relation or explanation for why these two codes are co-occurring. So what I could do now is open up a memo and then reflect on what I'm finding in the co-occurrence table. We can explore the quotations here to understand it in better detail. And so perhaps one explanation here is that in order for a person to experience personal growth, one has to undergo more worries and stress and responsibilities. And so this, gives, this is an example of an emergent finding from my research. And so the co-occurrence table can help uh, point, our, point our interest or you know, draw our attention to where there might be these possibly emerging relations across our concepts. Once again, we have the different options to export this table if we want to save it. And uh, in particular, just exporting it directly to Excel is great because then I can create a graphic and I can include it in my final paper to show... Uh, my emergent findings, for example. And so that's just one of the ways we can use the code co-occurrence table. Now, finally, let's take a look at the query tool. So with the query tool, we can recuperate any of the quotations from our project based on whatever queries we, we tell Atlas TI. So we can work with, again, individual codes or groups of codes. So for example, if I want to see all the quotations that, uh, that we have that are all about the relationship between happiness and children, I can just directly select the group here that has four codes. Just double click. Oh, I clicked the wrong one, I'll just remove that. We double click and it loads it into the query space. And down below, Atlas TI shows us all of the quotations that have been associated to any of the codes in this group. So this is a very straightforward query. We just told Atlas TI, give me the quotations, 
from this code group. But the great thing with the query tool is we can combine our codes using the different <laughs> operators, and then really we can even ask our research questions and see what answers we get. So for example, one of my main research questions is what do parents say about the relationship between happiness and children? So I don't just want to see these quotations. I want to see the quotations from these codes and that have been coded with my code about families that have children. And so now by clicking here, we see below only the quotations that have been coded with this code and any of the codes from this group. So this is one of the ways that we can query the data. And you'll see up here that there's a whole series of set operators, semantic operators, if you want to work from your network level, and proximity operators. So by hovering your mouse over any of them, you'll see exactly what it does. So there's no need to memorize all of these operators, but it's just to point out that you have them up here. And so you can combine your codes and groups in as many ways as you would like in order to bring up your quotations. We can save this result by exporting a report, just like we saw before. And in this case, we even have some automatic report options. So instead of manually ticking all the different boxes of the information, we can just click on one of these, and then we'll have all the content and the comments put together. And so with that, we've seen a, a quick global overview of Atlas TI-8 for Windows how we can start a project by adding our documents, we can describe and organize our documents from the manager, and then we can analyze text, images, video, audio, and any of our different types of data by creating our quotations and associating our codes and memos. We saw how we can create networks to visualize all this information and draw connections across everything. And then of course, how we can take advantage of the different analysis tools. Now, we haven't had time today to go into detail on all of the features of Atlas TI, such as importing survey data or uh, references from your reference manager if you use EndNote, Mendeley, Zotero. You can import Evernote data and Twitter data. You can also export the entire Atlas TI project to SPSS if you're conducting mixed method studies and you want to do quantitative analyses. Under the Tools and Support tab, you have some additional useful links which I recommend to all of you, which you can explore and find more information. And in particular on our YouTube channel, you'll find all of our video tutorials, and there you can see more explanations on using the different features of the software that we didn't have time to see today. And so I'll just uh, conclude by putting once again up our contact information here, in case you would like to take notes, and so if you ever have any questions in the future, or if you'd like to contact me personally and you have some questions about your specific project, I'd be more than happy to help.